The universe is full of brilliant and beautiful things. It's one of the most awe-striking visuals man will ever find, only rivaled by the even more incomprehensible beauty lurking in the unobservable sectors of space. The universe is also full of darkness and disaster waiting to happen. All types of radiation flourish across the cosmos, while stars explode into trillions of little pieces and black holes suck everything and anything into its infinite core. Most terrifying of all, however, are the things that can affect us here on Earth. We may be light years away from the intense decay of gamma ray bursts or the oblivion shattering deaths of stars during a supernovae, but we are not safe from all the potential horrors of space. Take the blood pulling phenomena known as magnetars, for example. Understood for less than half a century, magnetars are one of astronomers' favorite topics. Even if they do come with a spine chilling scenario, sure to end even the notion of mankind. In September of 1978, Soviet Russia successfully launched multiple satellites in the Venus atmosphere. Two of their unmanned space probes are part of the Venera program called Venera 11 and 12 respectively. Posing to continue some of the most promising work in the history of space exploration and the study of Venus, Venera 11 and 12 reached the hottest planet in our solar system on December 23rd of 1978 making official landfall two days later on Christmas Day. What they didn't expect was a puzzling discovery flashing out of nowhere just over two months later on March 5th, 1979, when at 10.51 an unbelievably powerful gamma radiation eruption hit both space probes from a far off location in interstellar space. The blast was so massive, in less than a millisecond, the radiation readings on Venera 11 and 12 spiked from 100 counts per second to 200,000 counts per second. They weren't the only probes to be affected either. In just 11 seconds, the Helios 2 probe orbiting the Sun on a mission from NASA was blanketed with gamma radiation. This was followed by gamma rays detected by Pioneer 12 part of the United States Venus-focused program called Pioneer, quickly followed by machines in Earth's atmosphere such as the Vela satellites and the Einstein Observatory. It didn't take long for experts to calculate the blast as the most powerful gamma-ray event in the history of extrasolar gamma-ray studies, and at least 100 times more powerful than the next one. Upon a closer inspection, astronomers honed in on the gamma ray burst's starting point and concluded it must have originated from the remnants of a star that exploded way back in year 3000 BC in the Large Magellanic Cloud, a satellite galaxy positioned 160,000 light years from our own Milky Way. Over the next 30 years or so, Readings of similar activity reached the computers at NASA and around the world, but few were able to explain the exact cause. That is until deeper dives into the radiation data and studies of interstellar space revealed a type of neutron star so heavily magnetized with unexpected bursts of gamma ray, it needed its own category. Thus, magnetars were born. While incredibly rare, their unique properties fascinated scientists around the globe and greater efforts were set forth to detect new magnetars throughout the universe. As of today, only 24 active magnetars have been confirmed, with another 6 possible as they wait for official classification. A few have changed the landscape of astronomy altogether, such as a magnetar in February of 2008 that was the first ever optically active magnetar candidate. There was also SGR 180620, a magnetar 50,000 light years away that emitted a burst in 2004 that released the same amount of energy in one tenth of a second that the Sun has produced in 150,000 years, temporarily expanding the Earth's ionosphere and compressing its magnetic field. 
Another historical magnetar was detected in 2013 in the Sagittarius A star system, the first of its kind to be seen orbiting a black hole, making it possible for astronomers to study magnetars as they relate to the galactic center. The most recent magnetar mystery came to light in April of 2020, when a connection between magnetars and fast radio bursts was made with star SGR 1935 plus 2154, a local magnetar in the Milky Way. Fast radio bursts, called FRBs, are pulsing radio wavelengths usually from unknown sources in space, lasting from partial milliseconds to a few milliseconds long. They were once thought to be potential signals from extraterrestrial life forms or unexplained black hole phenomena, but are now one step closer to being solved thanks to the further expansion of magnetar studies, a still young but promising explosive point of fascination. Compared to other celestial bodies across the cosmos, magnetars are relatively small stars, with diameters usually no bigger than 12 to 15 miles long. Despite being small in stature, a magnetar contains 1.5 solar masses on average. The insides of a magnetar are even more dense. Peter Douglas and Donald Brownlee said it best in their book titled Rare Earth, Why Complex Life is Uncommon in the Universe. If you could take a single tablespoon of whatever substance the interior of a magnetar withholds, you'd have in that single tablespoon 100 million tons of mass, one of the largest size-to-mass ratios in all of the universe. Of course, the most iconic feature of a magnetar outside of their unique makeup is their high output magnetic field. Magnetars are a form of neutron star, already wielding powerful magnetic fields, out of the nearly 3,000 confirmed neutron stars in our universe, almost all of them are classified as pulsars. Pulsars are distinguished by their fiercely magnetic poles at either end of their bodies, which emit beams of powerful radiation in opposite directions. These beams are not centered with the star's rotating axis, however, and were around in spherical motions, much like the light at the top of a lighthouse. This motion is what gives a pulsar the pulsing appearance from our vantage point. Magnetars are the pulsar's sibling, featuring a wide magnetic field instead of twin poles. For context, the force of their magnetic fields are 1000 times stronger than the magnetism of a pulsar, 100 million times stronger than the most powerful magnet ever created by humans, and 1 trillion times stronger than the magnetic field on Earth. In the rarest of scenarios, astronomers have detected six neutron stars that function both as a pulsar and magnetar. However, very little is known as to why this occurs and the combination neutron star is far more mysterious than their separate counterparts. Another fascinating aspect to the uncanny chemistry of magnetars are their relatively short lifespans in comparison to the rest of the cosmos. One may think because of the ultra-intense magnetic field, their lifespan as active bodies will last hundreds of millions of years. However, these magnetic fields actually diminish after only 10,000 years of activity. Once the magnetic field dies down, the gamma-ray bursts and X-ray activity in general ends. Due to the age of the universe and short lifespan of magnetars, it is estimated there are at least 30 million inactive magnetars lingering in space, once vibrant gamma-rich stars, now quiet morsels of darkness. The most fascinating side effect of magnetars' colossal power is their propensity for enduring starquakes, shifts in the crust of a neutron star that resemble earthquakes here at home volatile events that create terrifying gamma-ray bursts in their own right. Starquakes happen for two reasons. Stress on the outer shell of the star due to twisting and turning movements in the magnetized saturated interior, and stress on the outer shell due to lowering velocity and the release of energy, turning the star into a perfect sphere. There have only been a few starquakes recorded in our astrophysical history, but they have all averaged the strength of a theoretical magnitude 32 quake here on Earth. 
For context, the strongest magnitude ever recorded is a 9.5 in Chile in 1960, and it's physically impossible for the scale to go beyond 10, at least on planet Earth. If one thing is certain in the realm of magnetars, it's their unarguable point of origin, their birth deriving from the only thing possibly more explosive throughout all of space than the magnetar's gamma-ray bursts, supernovae. A supernova is defined as the collapse and ultimate death of a star through a brilliant explosion, acting as the final stage of evolution for a star. From the ashes, one of two things are born, a black hole or a neutron star, which acts as either a pulsar or a magnetar. How strong the magnetic field grows within this star-turned-magnetar is all dependent on the neutron star's magnetic flux conservation. Magnetic flux is the measurement of magnetic field lines passing through a closed surface. Thus, because a massive object, such as a star, devolves into a much smaller body, the magnetic field has the potential to remain the same, if not strengthening, despite being contained in less space. Even if the star loses magnetic flux through its supernova, a serendipitous process called a dynamo mechanism can still occur to form a magnetar. A dynamo mechanism in a neutron star is when rotational energy and heat are converted to magnetic energy due to the perfect combination of temperature, spin rate, and predetermined magnetic field readings in the neutron star. The dynamo mechanism would then balloon the magnetic field reading to astronomical figures. The rest of the neutron star's magnetism is created through a similar process called magneto-hydrodynamic generation. This is the build-up of conducting fluid as the neutron star forms from its post-explosive state. The fluid does not dissipate due to a proton-superconductor relationship with the inner mass of the neutron star and it eventually burgeons into an active state, and the modern-day archetype of a magnetar is fully realized. With the basics of magnetars and their ultra-powerful properties understood, only one real question remains. If a magnetar were to ever form close enough to Earth, could its gargantuan magnetic field have a serious, if not horrifying, effect on humankind? To set the scene, if a magnetar appeared 120,000 miles away from our home planet, or the distance halfway between here and the moon, its magnetic field could theoretically strip all of the information from all of the magnetic strips on all of the credit cards here on Earth in a few milliseconds. If a magnetar could pull off a feat like that, who's to say the dark side of a neutron star couldn't pull the iron straight from our blood in a similar fashion, all but effectively wiping out the human race, in addition to so many other life forms here on Earth? The answer all but lies in the distance said magnetar would have to be from our planet. At the halfway point from here to the moon, it would certainly cause all sorts of direct chaos from worldwide computer and communication malfunctions, to the depletion of the ozone layer due to an increase in gamma radiation. However, put the magnetar a few thousand miles away instead, and your worst fears will come true. The magnetic field would be so strong, the electrons from every single molecule in your body would be ripped out of you, and your body would be atomized first, then ionized completely. In other words, in a fraction of a millisecond, your body would become a cloud of plasma and you'd be whisked away at the speed of light. The only good news is that you'd probably never live long enough to witness your blood slowly getting sucked out from the pores on your skin, as the sheer gravity of a magnetar would rip your body apart before you even knew what happened. While the theoretical draconian effects of a magnetar may send shivers down your spine, you can breathe easy, as the chances of getting close enough to a neutron star are one in a number that approaches infinity. You'd first have to survive the literal death explosion of a star and the ensuing supernova, and there's surely no mystery as to what would happen if you wandered into that unfortunate scenario. 
The universe is full of beauty, and even when it's not, the pure darkness can only be marvelled at, mysterious blood-sucking magnet stars and all. <laughs>